Okay, oh, welcome everyone. Welcome for the webinar session, Cyber Security Ethical Hacking Using Kali Linux and Metasploit. Uh, my voice is clear, right? There's no issues, we can proceed. So um, uh, about this, uh, we are actually myself and Mr. Abhishek is there with me. So this webinar, uh, so me and Abhishek is going to take. Uh, so about us, my name is Baba, I live in USA. My qualification is Masters in Cyber Forensics and Information Security. My work experience is, I now have a nine years of experience in the cyber industry. Uh, so I'm from product and service-based companies before I worked. And my designation is cybersecurity senior consultant. And the awards and recognitions that I have is white hat researchers from Google, Microsoft, and EC Council, Facebook, etc. So basically, these are all the recognitions. I'm a bug hunter. Uh, so I find the bugs, I find the security bugs uh, so to, I mean, in various companies, various uh, like Google, Microsoft, and, the, and, and other companies. Uh, I report them. Uh, so I'll make sure like, uh, so I, 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 I'm a kind of a white hacker for them. Okay. And with me, Abhishek is there. Abhishek, uh, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Uh, hey everyone. Uh, this is Abhishek. Uh, I hold a bachelor's uh, degree in uh, computer science with uh, specialization in cybersecurity. Uh, I also, uh, have a lot uh, multiple certifications uh security certs uh, in my name and i'm a subject matter expertise in offensive and defensive security uh talking about my work ex i've been in the industry for seven plus years uh, and have been a part of uh, multiple services and product companies uh currently i'm working as a security engineer uh in a very reputed uh, product based company okay thanks abhishek uh, yeah, so uh, the agenda for today's session is we are going to discuss about this. Uh, what is ethical hacking, goals of ethical hacking, and why ethical hacking, what is security threats, uh, types of threats, and preventive measures, ethical hacking skill set required, hacking tools that being used in, uh, uh, you know, uh, ethical hacking, and the last three topics were very interesting, hacking using Kali Linux and live system hacking using Metasploit and live website hacking using any one of the attack. So uh, stay tuned, you will be having a good, uh, the last three sessions will be a live things. So you will see uh, if, uh, how we can hack a system or how we can do uh, website uh, hacking. Okay, and given time, we'll try to do the best to share one attack at least uh, okay let's start with uh the very basic uh, would you like to add anything abhishek yeah so there is a request to make the ppt in presentation mode Right. Thanks. Yep. Yeah, let's start with the basic. What is hacking? Hacking means doing a fraud acts such as privacy invasion, stealing corporate data like organizations data or personal data. Um, so that's that's actually a hacking, right? And who are the hackers? Hacker is a person who exploits the weakness in the website or in a computer systems or in a networks and the reason for the what he will uh, what is the motive to gain the access so hacker is a person who finds and exploits the weakness in a website or in a computer system or in any network for gaining the access now the hackers are usually skilled with computer programs and with the knowledge of computer security so we'll try to learn the computer security which is nothing but ethical hacking here okay and uh, be a brief, uh, you know, uh, going details about hacking. Hacking uh, not always done for malicious purpose, 
they are the uh, some lawful activity by cyber criminals motive for financial gain protest terrorism spying and uh, sometimes even just for fun for the challenges uh, nowadays hacking has become multi billion dollar industry with extremely sophisticated and successful techniques and we see the various hackers invade our privacy by attacks like packet sniffing email hacking password hacking there are a lot of attacks that we can you know see nowadays in the, the, the hackers will leverage that okay so what we learned what is uh, hacking and who are the hackers and what the skill set is required for computer programming with some knowledge of ethical hacking right going forward ethical hacking so now we know hacking then now what is this term called ethical hacking ethical hacking is nothing but identifying the weakness in a computer systems or a website or the mobile apps okay so we are going to identify the weakness which is nothing but a vulnerability or a security bug in a computer system or a websites or a mobile apps uh, and not only that and coming up with the counter measures that protect the weaknesses so we find the vulnerabilities we find the security bugs in it and then we are coming out how to solve the how to protect against that vulnerability so that is ethical hacking and who are hackers here who are ethical hackers so ethical hackers are nothing but they get a written permissions from the organization so uh, uh, if uh, anyone wants if any organization wants to do uh, ethical hacking to their software or to their product so they will be given a permission to ethical hackers so ethical hacker will get written permissions from the organizations before they hacking sorry uh, and uh, what the other thing is protect the privacy of the organizations been hacked so the ethical hackers make sure uh, organization privacy will be protected okay and what the other things ethical hacker do is transparently report all the identified at weakness in the computers or in the website or in the network or in the mobile apps to the organization so they report transparently so if there is a critical finding they will say it is a critical finding to the organization they will say high critic high finding high security bug is there in your website in your software they say uh, you know medium the based on the uh, uh, security principle the terms they will say uh, critical or high and all with very transparently report will be shared to the organization once the ethical hacking is done so so these are ethical hackers the things to do and uh, why ethical hacking we are seeing nowadays cyber crime is on the rise damage is significant cyber security builds trust our identities protect our data every organization has vulnerabilities remember that every organization has vulnerabilities so it's just a time and it just need a skillful uh, hackers to find out that okay yeah let's talk a bit about security fundamentals uh, cia uh, say so it's nothing but confidentiality integrity and availability we have discussed before right uh, like uh, uh ethical hackers will report the uh, findings to the organization based on what how they will find out whether it's a critical vulnerability whether it's a high finding or it's a medium uh, vulnerability like that so based on these things confidentiality integrity and availability these are the security uh, you know main principles uh it called as a trade so confidentiality is nothing but privacy we might have heard about this word confidentiality and uh, vulnerabilities or risk will be calculated based on these three things uh, any any vulnerability if a system get hacked or if a website get hacked so which means either three would be affected either one or two or three will be, would be affected if three would be affected then it is a critical finding if two then it's high if it is one then it's a medium or low okay so what is confidentiality confidentiality is nothing but uh, it's a privacy and uh, uh, this measures are designed to prevent sensitive information from unauthorized attempts unauthorized access attempts which is nothing but you or the uh, let's say we are in a college and uh, in a lab only the staff is having uh, access but students are also going inside they are unauthorized so if you are bypass if you show the uh, 
uh, you, uh, you know, staff identity and go as a, uh, uh, as a student, if you go as a teacher or a, a faculty, then it's unauthorized access. Okay, so uh, the staff is going to lose the privacy there. Okay, that is one thing. Integrity is nothing but uh, it, it involves maintaining the consistency and accuracy, the trustworthiness of data over its entire life cycle, which means if client is sending some data to the server, that should be consistency with accuracy and the trustworthiness. So when data is transferring from client to server, uh, it should be, uh, it should maintain the full complete accuracy consistency. Okay, like say if you are if you are uh, withdraw some amount in ATM, and you clicked some five hundred bucks or thousand dollars, and you you get some money, but it should be a complete transaction. Okay, so when you receive the money from the other end, bank should deduct in your account that thousand dollars or five hundred dollars, right? If there is any power issues or anything, something happened in between the integrity, the consistency, the complete accuracy or trustworthiness of data transferred will be lost. So that, that should be maintained is what integrity means. And availability, availability is nothing but uh, the networks or systems or web applications, any information should be consistently and readily accessible when authorized users need them. When the users wants the server or when the users wants uh, hmm, website that should be available consistently and readily accessible is what availability here okay hope you got what is confidentiality availability and integrity so in cyber security in ethical hacking uh, this three plays a major role based on this three uh, your vulnerability will be your security bug will be calculated okay now let's talk about the basic terminologies of ethical hacking uh, uh, vulnerability, first one, uh, as discussed, vulnerability is nothing but a security loophole, a security bug, or a weakness in a system, or a website, or a mobile apps like iOS or Android. If you find any weakness or loophole or a security bug that allows a threat, okay, so that is called vulnerability. So for now, remember, vulnerability is nothing but a weakness or a loophole or a security bug, okay? that allows a threat. And what is threat? Threat is nothing but a danger. Uh, taking advantage of this vulnerability, which means you found a security loophole. And if you, if you take advantage of that security loophole and you hack a system, that is a threat. Hacking is a threat here. Hacking means danger. Okay, so you have a house and uh, uh, you found the door is very secure. You are unable to uh, break it. Uh, as a thief, you want to go inside and steal the data or, or steal the stuff over there at the at house. So what you do, you try to look for the vulnerabilities of that house. Okay. Uh, so you know that door is very secure, very strong. You can't do anything. Then you look for the windows, you look for roof, you look for the any, any, any areas where it is weak. So uh, let's assume that your windows of the house are weak, which means vulnerability is the door, windows. Okay, and breaking that window is a threat. You are breaking that and going entering into the house. And what is risk? Risk is calculated basically this, uh, you know, multiple of these two things, vulnerability into threat. There's a potential loss caused due to the threat. Is uh, risk equal to vulnerability and threat. So these are the uh, basic terminologies of ethical hacking. And now come to vulnerability assessment, penetration testing, exploit and payload. Uh, vulnerability assessment, this is the process. In a hacking, uh, first you need to assess the vulnerability. That's called a vulnerability assessment. The process of identifying the risk and vulnerabilities in a website or in a hardware or in a mobile apps, anything, anything. The, if you, uh, you know, the process of identifying the vulnerabilities is called vulnerability assessment. Okay, and uh, penetration testing, is nothing but once you find out the vulnerabilities in vulnerability assessment, you found some vulnerabilities, you found some security bugs in vulnerability assessment. Now using that, you are going to exploit it. That's called penetration testing. An authorized simulated attack performed on a computer system to evaluate its security. 
so penetration testing is nothing but you perform an attack okay it, this is a process of performing an attack it's called penetration testing so basically you see in the uh, you know market vapt vulnerable assessment and penetration testing jobs a lot okay this is nothing but uh, ethical hacker the work called uh, called as vulnerability assessment and penetration testing and when it comes to lost topic exploit and payload exploit is a piece of code written to take an advantage of a particular vulnerability so there is a vulnerability and uh, you have to uh, you know break that how do you break you should have a program a simple code okay that code is nothing but exploit and payload is again a piece of code to execute through said exploit uh, any malicious code is called as a payload these are the basic terminologies of hacking uh, and now talk about the threat we have discussed what is threat threat is a possible danger that may exploit vulnerability uh, the actions that cause it occurs are security attacks a security attack may be a passive attack or an active attack so different types of threats are there uh, uh, so those are passive attacks and then uh, active attack what is passive attack gaining the information getting all the information so you are not performing any attack in passive attacks you are just going to get the uh, information like you say recce so you want to perform anything but before that you will gather you gather all the information about that particular uh, resource right that's called passive attack okay and uh, it's difficult to detect obviously because there is no uh, action performed they are just doing without the knowledge they are just gathering the information and active attack tries to alter the system and affect its operation so active attack means it's an aggressive scan aggressive attack so once you got uh, the weakness or the once you got the information about that attack so now what you do you will try to um, um, attack it attack uh, doing an attack is called active attacks active active ways that's the thing uh, yeah, uh, we'll discuss uh, the passive attacks, live demo, or other things in using Kali Linux, the last step, last but three step. So for now, I'll just move ahead with uh, some more basics. Uh, yeah, uh, types of threats: virus, worms, Trojan horses, ransomware, JavaScript, spyware. Many more are there. So how many of you heard about WannaCry ransomware? So we have seen recent days WannaCry ransomware, right? From UK, it affected to a lot of hospitals, a lot of organizations, um, anywhere. Uh, so I take your questions later. Someone I saw, someone is raising hand. Uh, keep your questions in short box or yeah, we'll take all the questions later. Okay, so uh, virus, worms, Trojans, ransomware, spyware is nothing but these are all a piece of code that uses your computer uh, to get hacked. Uh, like say, virus is nothing but a software program. Okay, all these are, a soft, these threads are all, almost all are like uh, a, a piece of code, uh, which will replicate by itself and which spread to other computers from one system to another system. These are all the types, okay? Uh, so, but different, different, have different, different purpose. Let's say botnet used to perform a distributed denial of service attack. Denial of service attack is nothing but you, uh, hacker will try to uh, attack one server multiple times. Okay. So, and it will, and uh, the hacker will make the service down, the website down, the system down and steal the data. So, you no know, spend spam, uh, send spam data spams and allow the attacker access to the devices when it's connected. Uh, same way virus, uh, worm, trojans, other stuff. Spyware is also same. Software that is hidden uh, from the users in order to gather information about internet interactions, keystrokes, passwords, and other valuable data. Okay, adverts we have seen. Uh, so many websites have this adverts kind of things. Like if you click on it, it will redirect to some other page that contains that will actually hack your hijack your browser so afterwards whatever you type in your browser that will be seen by the hacker so that's called adware adware attacks also there adware threats also there you see a lot of website having this kind of advertisements um, you know that that things and ransomware so your system without your knowledge your system is hacked 
and there will be one uh, notepad file on your desktop. Other than that file, no other file is accessible. If you open local C, local D, or you want to open your uh, uh, photos or anything, it won't work. Everything will be encrypted. So I think I'm sure like some of you might have come across this kind of situations. Ransomware is nothing but you just need to open that notepad. You are allowed to open only one file which was kept in the desktop. And if you open it, you see that you have to make a payment through PayPal account, or you have to make a payment through Bitcoin uh, to get a decrypted key. So this is nothing but a hacker has encrypted uh, all your files in your system through remotely. And if you want to get your files back, you have to pay the amount, okay? To, to get your files back, there should be a decryption key that will be shared uh, by the hacker once you paid it. I have seen many uh, uh, photo studio people, photo photographers, they used to uh, you know, come to me or come to any web computer shops, they go and they will say that our system, we have a lot of, uh, these hackers also target certain people like uh, uh, hospitals, organizations, and uh, basically for regular kind of things, we can see photographers because they have a huge, I mean, very important data, right? All our marriages, uh, functions, photos. So uh, they do, and they're not much educated awareness of, uh, they don't have awareness of this clicking the links and all adverts or ransomware. So without their knowledge, they'll be clicking it and all their photos will be encrypted. And uh, they ask for three lakhs or five lakhs based on the, you know, uh, photographer company. And they, I've seen that many of people paid and get that back, the encryption key, decryption key. And when they run that decryption on their desktop, their all files will be back. These are the threads. And uh, yeah, uh, let's discuss about uh, hackers are actually three types, white hackers, black hats, and gray box. Uh, white hackers get, uh, it's nothing but they get a full information to the pen tester. Organizations will share the full information to the pen tester. Like say, uh, there is a website. So uh, organization wants to do a ethical hacking to their product, to their website. What they will do is they will reach out to the white, white, white hackers and they'll ask to perform white box testing. And uh, uh, it's, they will give the URL obviously and credentials, which means username and password and the source code also given for testing. So uh, these white hats, what they'll do is they will try to perform all ethical hacking things on the website using the credentials. They will go inside and they will look each and every functionality and using the source code, they will find the bugs uh, and the security bugs, not just uh, normal bugs, like whether the functionality is working or not, not that bugs. So security point of, if there is a username and password, if there is a login page, can we break that login code? So that things will be done in white box. Uh, when it comes to black box, uh, this is about black, black hat people. So they do testing without having any information. Like we discussed before, uh, passive attack, active attacks, they start with passive attacks, they look, they gather all the information uh, and they get, uh, they, they're only provided by URL. They just give, I mean, companies will give a URLs uh, and they will ask, we want to check our product is secure or not. Just try black box testing. Okay. Uh, so they will give a URL only provided. So that time uh, the, the testing will be done with only URL. They have to break the username and password. They have to go inside. Uh, they have to, you know, hack uh, without any prior, uh, any other information. Okay, and gray box is nothing but both white box plus uh, black box. Sometimes, first, sometimes they give only URL and then after three days or four days, they will share the credentials. It's like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, so the phases of uh, uh, ethical hacking is six, five to six types starts with reconnaissance, gathering or reconnaissance, and then next scanning, then hacking, which is gaining access, and then maintaining that access and clearing the tracks and then reporting. What is reconnaissance here? Reconnaissance is nothing but uh, gathering information about the target 
And scanning is nothing but once you get the uh, information about the target, you will be scanning it using various tools in Kali Linux and other tools and uh, manual analysis also you will do. So you will try to find the vulnerabilities in scanning part, not in the recurrences part. Okay, uh, in third phase, it's like gaining access, nothing but whatever you found on the uh, second phase, which is scanning, you use that vulnerability and you try to hack the mission or track, uh, uh, hack the uh, website or mobile apps like that. And uh, uh, maintaining access is nothing but you create a backdoor, it's like post exploitation. So now you entered into a house. So you hack the house and you enter into the house. So once you enter into the house, you have to make sure like no one is watching and you have to make sure uh, all the information, whatever you required. Let's say there is some fridge, TV that you don't want. You want what? You want the gold, money, those stuff. So uh, so which is required, what is to be done? You create a backdoor and get a uh, post exploitation stuff done, okay? Uh, so you maintain the access like no one is watching and you maintain the data to be, uh, proper data to be theft. And the fifth phase is nothing but clearing tracks. So before you leave, you have to clear your tracks so that a police or anyone is coming, they cannot uh, find you. In the same way here in ethical hacking, you have to clear your tracks. When you are you hack the system, when you are coming out from that system, you should delete the logs and other files that has been created to data theft. Okay, and the final one is report summarization the findings. In ethical hacking, as I told, ethical hackers will report transparent reports to the organization, right? So you have to tell the house owner, you have to tell the website owner, you have to tell the system owner, like how you entered, how you fooled the watchman, how you entered, what are the vulnerabilities you found as a door or, or a windows or anything. And uh, uh, once you entered, how you have taken the data, how you maintain the access, everything will should be written in a report document and submit that and make sure that all the things not happen next time. That's about ethical hacking phases. Okay. Uh, Abhishek, would you like to take from here? Yeah, sure. I'll share my screen. Okay. Uh, so hey everyone, so we'll quickly cover uh, some of the uh, pending items on the theory part. Uh, a lot of you will be having this question uh, on what are the skills required to become a successful ethical hacker. I would say some of the ones that fall in the technical domain is uh, knowledge of uh, computer systems and networks, having little bit of proficiency in programming and scripting languages not necessarily for actual doing the actual coding, uh, but at least to understand the code and uh, probably uh, automate some of it. Uh, the, the important requirement, uh, the next important requirement would be for uh, understanding the cybersecurity uh, concepts and technology. And these are like the technical skills, but apart from that, some of the soft skills uh, also do go a long way, like critical thinking, problem solving skills, communication, ability to work under pressure at times when you have deadlines, uh, and then the ethics and professionalism. Uh, ethics are really important because uh, we are working in the capacity of ethical hacking uh, as ethical hackers, uh, so that's why. And what are the tools uh, used by an ethical hacker? I would say predominantly uh, it would be stuff related to uh, identifying vulnerabilities uh, and exploits and also to test the existing security of systems, networks, and applications. So the scope would be uh, your network scanning and recognizance schools, uh, your vulnerability scanners, any exploitation frameworks, and uh, for web application, any testing tools that uh, you may need. Uh, as uh, Baba already covered, uh, Penetration testing is just uh, a method of finding how secure any system network or application is uh, by simulating an, atta an attack similar to how a malicious actor would do. Why people do it? Because uh, so that they can identify vulnerability and weaknesses in any of these uh, systems and uh, they can then secure them against those uh, vulnerabilities by mitigating them. 
and why organizations do it uh, it's really a part of their uh, security program because it helps them proactively identify all the vulnerabilities before actual malicious actors uh, can find them and uh, it kind of helps them to reduce the risk uh, of a security breach or a data compromise uh, and these are the faces. Uh, we'll quickly see them, uh, these faces happening in a demo uh, shortly. And these are the standard faces provided by pen testing execution standard, which is a very popular uh, standard uh, that's there. Uh, some common misconceptions uh, between, and it's a misconception and uh, sometimes uh, terms are used interchangeably. So I'll quickly clarify uh, how a penetration testing differs from a vulnerability assessment and a bug bounty. So penetration testing, is going to be comprehensive. Uh, a vulnerability assessment will be more uh, a high level assessment. Uh, in terms of methodology, the vulnerability assessment generally relies on automated tools, but pen testing is both manual and automated uh, in its approach. The output in both cases is in the terms of reports, but in pen testing, you generally give a detailed report along with the uh, recommendations uh, on how you'll go about fixing the uh fixing the bugs which are exploitable in vulnerability assessment you'll just give them the list of uh, known vulnerabilities you'll not go ahead and exploit them uh, pen testing is generally uh more of an ad hoc or periodic exercise but a vulnerability assessment or va it is called uh is performed on a, a regular part if you are in a mature organization and how the pen testing differs from a bug bounty uh Bug bounty programs are narrowly focused, uh, as in uh, they reward you for finding bugs uh, in specific functionalities in which they are interested. Uh, in pen testing, you follow the pen test methodology that we just looked at in the last slide. In bug bounty, it's more of a free hand. Uh, you can use any approach that you like. Uh, pen tests are formed by uh, the first party as in the company which owns the products or any third party organization bug bounties involve a large community of individuals coming together and doing the uh, bug bounty pen testers are paid for their time and expertise uh, bug bounty professionals are paid uh, when they find bugs uh, not just for their time and the purpose it's pretty much similar uh, issues that might get no lost uh, or not ca caught during pen testing can be caught during bug bounty. Uh, and the reason being it's kind of incentivized for them to find bugs and report them. Uh, and they have a lot of time compared to pen testers, right? It's time boxed or pen test. Uh, a bug bounty professional can take any amount of time to find any bug and hence they can go deeper. Abhishek, we are running out of time. Can we go a bit faster on the labs instead of this? Yeah. Topic? So yeah, yeah. these are prerequisites for the lab. So the the, the lab that we are going to look first uh, uh, as a part of the demo is related to network testing. Uh, how you would go about doing a network pen test? Uh, a typical network in any organization would comprise of your networking device, uh, networking devices, your security devices, and your servers. Uh, a server is basically a system that hosts your application and other services which are relevant to your application. You could do a pen test either being part of the system when you are uh, physically present in the organization uh, connected to their network or via VPN, or you can do it externally when you don't have access to that system. Uh, access as an internal access to that system. You still can access the IPs, but you are not internally a part of their uh, network. So we'll look at this attack scenario. It's a very simple attack scenario. Uh, you have two machines here. One is my uh, Kali Linux desktop, uh, which is uh, currently running as a virtual machine in my laptop. And the other machine is the target machine, which we are trying to, uh, which we'll try to hack. Now this target machine uh, has a web application running uh, on it, uh, which is uh, to Apache web server. And there are a bunch of other services also running in this uh, particular target server. Uh, since, and this target uh, server is running, also running in my machine as a virtual machine. So basically uh, I have direct access uh, from my Kali Linux machine uh, to my target uh, machine. And the tools that I'm going to use in my uh, Kali Linux machine are NetDiscover, Nmap, and Metasploit. So, Quickly moving uh, to the tools itself, right? Uh, 
I'll just give a brief on what each of these tools will be used for. So uh, let discover if you're actually a part of uh, any assessment, right? Ideally, you will be provided with the IPs on which you are going to uh, do the penetration testing. Let's say if you're not provided uh, those IPs uh, and you're actually a part of their physical uh, network, you can actually use uh, NetDiscover to scan their entire uh, uh, IP range while connected to their network and discover all the live IPs and perform uh, testing on them, given that they have given approval uh, to do that testing. Uh, so it basically detects all the live hosts in the network uh, and it uses ARP protocol in the backend to do that. Uh, Nmap is network mapper. It will help you to uh, understand what services are being uh, and operating systems are running on these uh, identified live hosts. And using that, we'll be able to uh, try to find off, uh, find any existing vulnerabilities in these services. The way we'll do that is we'll use ExploitDB and Metasploit. Uh, ExploitDB is optional. ExploitDB is basically a list of uh, all security known security vulnerabilities and exploits that exist for any particular service or software that is running. And Metasploit is the framework that we'll be using uh, to basically carry out the pen test and uh, vulnerability assessment against uh, any uh, system and networks. So with that, uh, we'll quickly uh, move to the commands that we'll be using and the setup. So in NetDiscover, it's just the simple NetDiscover command, and this will give us the list of IPs. Uh, NBAP, we are going to use uh, this particular command. The P part here is for identifying all the ports running in our target machine. And the V is for identifying the version of service that's being running. And the target IP will get when we use the NetDiscover command. So we'll just plug it in here. And then uh, once we have a list of all the services uh, running in the target system, we'll quickly one by one uh, enumerate uh, for all the services, uh, the known uh, exploits which are uh, available in ExploitDB. Alternatively, uh, Metasploit also gives you the, uh, the functionality of searching ExploitDB for uh, those particular uh, vulnerabilities by using the search functionality. So you, login into Metasploit using MSF console and you search for particular exploits and it will give you if there are any exploits are available. So either you can use ExploitDB via Google or you can use MSF console within Metasploit to find known exploits. And then once you have a list of exploits, you'll select an exploit. Uh, there will be, uh, once you select an exploit, you have to configure certain options specific to that exploit. Uh, you configure those options. R host is basically the IP of the target host. L host is basically our IP from where we are launching the attack. Payload is uh, basically selecting what kind of uh, payload we want to uh, send uh, to the target system to uh, compromise it. And then exploit is like triggering the uh, payload. So yeah, so these are just screenshots. So, but I'll uh, show you the live setup now. Let me quickly log in. So this is the uh, target uh, machine, uh, which is running uh, the uh, web server. Uh, I just bear with me with the resolution. Uh, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are not able to see what's written in it, but I can assure you I've not logged in into the server. I've just started the server. And uh, if for those who are able to zoom in, you would see that I'm still in the login prompt. I haven't even logged in into this uh, server. But uh, if you see here, I'm able to uh, access this uh, application, which is running on the server. And this is the IP of the server. Uh, and this is one of the application. There are many applications running on this uh, particular IP, uh, the server. And the, re the way I found this IP is by running the netdiscover co command. Uh, so when I ran the netdiscover command, I just typed in netdiscover in Kali Linux. This is my Kali Linux machine for those who haven't seen it before. I found this IP uh, like this. Uh, so when I just scanned for all the connected hosts, uh, it's through these particular IPs that uh, my system, uh, my virtual Kali machine is connected with. And this was one of the IP that stood out. The first and last IP is uh, generally in a IP range uh, of 192.168.x.x uh, dot dot subnet can be ignored, including uh, two as well. So that's why this stood out. Uh, so I ran an nmap command similar to what I had uh, 
mentioned before using the hyphen p and hyphen sv uh, handles so these are called handles in nmap which allow you to configure your scan in a particular way and then i've given the ip which is my target uh, web server ip and if you see here uh let me uh, i can zoom this one definitely uh, um yeah so if you see here these are all the ports which are open in this uh, target server or uh, which is this uh, machine which is running here and uh, you see this is the uh, web server which is running web service which is running apache and that is what we were able to access uh, through the browser uh, but that's not it uh, there are a bunch of other services running in this as well uh, what we'll do is we'll quickly pick up one of these services and see if there is an exploit available for uh, any of these uh, so and i'm showing you this uh, i just ran this before the session uh, just to save time because running scans can take time and in the interest of time that we uh, i'm just trying to uh, go go through all the uh, history of the uh, commands that have entered so that doesn't consume time so if you notice here uh, there is one uh, service here which is running on port uh, triple six seven and triple and double six nine seven it's called unreal ircd so what i did is after uh typing in msf console and uh starting metasploit on my kali machine i searched for an I exploit uh for this unreal service and i just typed in search in unreal and it threw me uh three particular exploits which are well known and already uh present in the uh metasploit database i picked one of these because it had a very good rating excellent and uh, i typed in the use and the part to the exploit as you can see here and uh, after that so the next step as i mentioned right when you decide to use an exploit you have to configure the exploit also so i've typed in show options and i can see all the uh, con possible configurations for this uh, exploit one of them which is left blank here is our host and our host is basically the uh, metasploit uh, the uh, target server machine ip which i was able to gather to uh, discover command and hence i have set the our host uh, to my target ip and then i have to uh, fix what payload i'm going to use to exploit this machine uh, so i've typed in show payloads command and i've got 10 11 possible exploits i picked the reverse shell exploit uh, so that I get a reverse connection from that target machine to my Kali machine. Uh, I've set the payload as option five, which is this. And then uh, once you select the payload, you have to also configure the options for the payload. Uh, so I've typed in show options again, and then I can see that L host, which is my machine uh, IP is not configured here. So I've quickly set the L host and I've uh, typed in the exploit, uh, triggered the uh, exploit. And it ran, it exploited successfully. And now I got a root connect, a, a reverse shell of the target machine, which is this machine uh, on my Kali Linux machine. And the way I can confirm this is when I uh, run the IP config, I get an IP, which is not my machine. It is the target machine's IP, which means I'm accessing the target machine from my machine. And what I've quickly done is, uh, I have uh, also tried to create a new uh, user because I don't know the uh, username and password for this machine. So what I've done is since I have access to remote access to that machine, I've added a user account and I've created a password for it. And the way I can confirm that is uh, by looking in the ETC password file uh, that this particular user has been added. So I'll enter this username hacker2 and this password uh, just to uh, confirm. So bear, uh, sorry if those who can't see this clearly. So I'm typing in hacker two, and then I'm typing in hacker one, two, three, which is the username and the password. And uh, you see, I've uh, been, I, I can log in now. And let's say if I give IF config, uh, it gives me the IP, which is 192.168.229.132, which is the IP of the target machine. So, by using Metasploit and exploiting a known vulnerability on a service running on uh, this target server, I was able to get remote access with root permission on the target server. And this is a very pretty common scenario. Uh, and in a lot of uh, live uh, machines as well uh, in real world. Uh, but yeah, we'll get into that stuff uh, later.
So I'll, with that, I'll probably hand this over back to uh, Baba because we have another interesting demo, which is going to be on a live website from him. Uh, I'll start. I'll stop sharing now. Yeah, Abhishek, just keep the same same link. Can you please share it? I just brief some things, and then I'll continue with the website. Yeah, we are out of time. Um, yeah, yeah. Just let just me share. Like, yeah, yeah. One second. Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, yeah. So uh, you have seen that uh, Mr. Abhishek has uh, taken a one target mission, and he doesn't even know the IP address of it. And he has one more mission. This is Kali Linux mission. Uh, this Kali Linux mission, he is going to uh, run a command called net discover and find out the uh, other missions which are connected to the same router. So he run net discover and he found out the IP address. Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. He run net discover and he found out that target IP address which are connected to the Wi-Fi. Uh, there are a lot of other missions also, but he is interested in this mission. So he typed then, as we told, uh, information gathering, he used nmap command, nmap tool for information gathering. Okay, so he he entered nmap. Nmap is one tool that we'll discuss. Nmap hyphen p, uh, some commands he used and he, he entered that IP address. With this, he found the doors. As I told, the, the house which contains the windows or you know or anything so he found some doors which is nothing but ports here and uh, he see there are a lot of doors are open he's interested in unreal uh, which is there so he searched is there any vulnerabilities with the unreal so the port 6667 he found it okay it's it's open so he's he needs to he checked whether there is any interesting findings so immediately he opened ms console so MS console is the things that to be open the Metasploit. So he looked for a search unveil and he found there is a backdoor. Okay, backdoor in the Metasploit, which is readily available. So he used that uh, uh, options and he delivered. He, he just typed show options. He found that our host is nothing but remote host, uh, the target mission. So he's, he found that our host is blank there. Uh, yeah, blank there. So yeah, so he said that set that remote host which he needs to hack so he kept it set remote host and the target mission he kept and show payloads he run everything was set then he said simply use the payload and then he run the exploit yeah he used that payload set the payload show options now you see the r host has been set so uh, immediately he set the l host l host is his local mission like uh, the Abhishek, which is working on that, right? So he kept that mission IP address there and he simply entered exploit. Just giving exploit will, uh, because Metasploit is such a powerful tool which, which will automatically uh, exploit the things. So he exploited, then he typed, who am I? It shows root and he typed IP config. It shows not Kali Linux IP address. It shows the uh, Ubuntu mission, the target mission IP address there. Okay, that's how he added a, he doesn't know, even know the username and password, right? So he created himself a username. You see, user add hacker to password hacker to at the end. Yeah. Yeah, so he created a username and password and then he entered into that mission. That's how he hacked the mission. Thanks, Abhishek. Let me share my screen. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I've seen that you people are asking about other other things. Yeah, we'll discuss that in key questions in few minutes. Yeah, Kali Linux. Kali Linux is uh, you have seen that how powerful it is. Kali Linux is a Linux mission distribution. Uh, uh, it is a open source. It is maintained and funded by offensive security. And this has a huge advantage for, uh, uh, you know, ethical hacking and pen tests and other people. It has a almost 600 test, uh, testing tools are included. These are all pre-built included the uh, things. It is open source Git tree and it is a multi-language support. It's available both in 32 and 64 bits and users can customize Kali Linux to suit their needs. And who use Kali Linux? Ethical hackers, penetration testing, forensics people, and others. Okay, let's go. Uh, let's see how we can download.
Kali Linux. Simple, I'm not showing how to download it, but I'm just saying where to download. So Kali.org, uh, you get this website, Offensive Security website. Click on, sorry, click on download. You can see two images. One is uh, installer images, another one is virtual images. Click on virtual images. You see pre-built virtual machines. So which means you everything is readily available. You just need to uh, download that mission. Uh, these are the options available. VMware or VirtualBox. I prefer, I suggest you to take any of this virtual VMware or VirtualBox. Just download it. If you download, this is a zip file that contains 2GB and if you extract it, you can see uh, a, uh, a folder, just open that. But before that, your virtual box should be installed in that, like this. There is This is a virtual box where you can create a multiple uh, operating system. I'm using Windows, I would like to uh, use Kali Linux, then I have created a virtual box. Okay, so using virtual box, you can create a n number of missions, Windows, Windows 10, Windows 8, uh, Kali Linux, Ubuntu, all those things, okay? So once it is installed, you just double click this extracted folder, it will take you to this. And the password, default password is Kali and Kali. You can see this is called Kali Linux. And you see there are a lot of tools has been pre-built, installed. Each and every category, you can see n number of tools. So information gathering, you see these are all the tools I saw, people are asking in the chat. So there are a lot of tools. Okay, not only this, these are all already installed, Nmap, Recognition, Spider Tool, Multigo. Uh, there are a lot of NetDiscover. We saw that no NetDiscover is used to find out the website, the, uh, the systems which are connected in the same router. If you are in college, using NetDiscover, you will find out all other people IP addresses. Uh, it is like IP scanner in Windows. Uh, you can see there's a lot of uh, a lot of tools uh, there. And for vulnerability analysis, Nikto, Nmap, uh, fuzzing tools are there. And uh, for web applications, you can see Burp Suit, uh, SQL Map, WP Scan for web uh, WordPress scans. Okay, and web crawling, brute force, directory force. This is a password attacks. So you have a username and password in the website. You don't know how to, you can, as a manual, you can just type one or five times or 10 times, 15 times max. But if you use these tools, you can attempt, you can give attempt of at least uh, uh, 20,000 or 30,000 like that in a couple of, in two, three hours. So you can check a probability using these tools. You can create your own username and passwords with the probability. You can say that I want this length, this much A, B, C, D, and uh, uh, combined with the uh, alphabets, numerics, all those things we can give. And then using these tools, you can get a word file. And that word file, you can run against the login page. Okay, reverse engineering is nothing, but you have a software, you need to uh, make it to the programming. So generally how it is, you have you will develop a code, and then you will execute it, it will become a software, right? But reverse engineering is nothing but you have a uh, program, uh, you have a software, and then you will try to retrieve that to the code. That's called reverse engineering. Using these tools, you can reverse these things. Yeah, uh, so I quickly show a few things. Mm, yeah, uh, so uh, Nikto is one tool where you can see, you can run just Nikto hyphen H, and any website, any website. And you see, uh, sorry, Nikto is small in. You should see the color difference for all tools and it will scan, okay? This is one tool. This is a website scanning tool, Nikto is. So it will uh, it will look for cl and uh, click zacking attacks uh, and uh, any headers or any redirections are happening, all those things it will check. Okay, this is one tool. Uh, you can also see so NS lookup. So you tell any name, amazon.com. So I would like to see the address, server name. Uh, this is the uh, server, Amazon server, IP addresses, internal IP addresses. You know, those details we can check. This is called information gathering, okay? Uh, NS lookup, uh, WS, who is, who is domains, all this is used for uh, information gathering. 
nmap nmap as i said uh, so if you run this nmap is a network mapper tool so you can run this against the ip system ip or website uh, this can be changed based on your requirement so i just want the open ports the, the, the doors which i can go ahead take this advantage of it so i ran nmap hyphen hyphen open and amazon.com and i got 80 and 443 are open okay so like that and uh, next one will be uh, derp tool this is one tool directory buster so what you do this is a website so uh, this website you want to see the login admin login and other stuff you doesn't see uh, normally in the browser admin login so you can open flipkart and you see your user login right but you want to see admin logins and all you required a derp tools or go buster there are a lot of tools uh, this is called directory buster so directory uh, listing tools so this path is kali linux local mission path this path contains the word list uh, and then tools so i just took one of the common text for simply to show so this contains all the payloads and that will run against this target website so i use derp and then the target website and the word list that i want to check so what it is it, it, it did uh, these are the directories were there which is not visible to us but it is there okay you can simply copy this and log in into the browser i mean you can simply uh, copy this and try to access these pages okay this kind of very sensitive information like log files like env files uh, uh, any images or any uh, hard coded files developers might be sometimes uh, you know they will leave that uh, so that time it will this tool will be very powerful and it will be useful to get information and uh, the other thing is who is who is just is a tool like uh, this again a information tool uh, reconnaissance tools uh, so you type google.com uh, just who is google.com you see there is a lot of information available about the google.com uh, who uh, created this when created this 1997 they has been created on which website they have created uh, markmonitor.com at that time 1997 who is the owner what uh, which email id he has created this uh, and um, uh, which phone number he used at that time all this information if you want you can update that phone numbers all this information we can see this can be leverages as a social engineering we can find his phone number his uh, email address all this information when this been created this information we can see okay so you can see contact information so it is it is the it is uh, registered in europe okay and there is one more tool uh, interesting tool wifi wifi is used to hack your wifi so i am sitting in uh, in my apartment i am sitting in one flat i would like to see my neighbors wifi things so i just use wifi uh, automated friend there are so many wifi passwords you can see here wireless attacks these are all the tools you can simply run that tools you will get uh, Yeah, looks like Baba lost connection. Uh, let's give him a minute to rejoin. Yeah, so just bear with us. Uh, he's rejoining. There was a network issue. Yeah, uh, yeah, he lost uh, internet connectivity, so that's why he dropped. Uh, I'll probably uh, use this few minutes to go over the questions uh, while he joins back. 
So the first question that we had was, uh, there are different tools like Wallace that detect vulnerabilities and says methods to fix. Why should any organization risk their privacy by giving return permissions to hack the system? So I can say two things here. One is uh, tools like Wallace, right? Uh, they are mostly used for vulnerability analysis. And we just uh, uh, had a PPT uh, in one of the PPTs difference between vulnerability assessment and penetration testing. So they will find vulnerabilities, potential vulnerabilities, but they will not exploit it or they'll not give confirmation with 100% confidence that it is actually exploitable. Uh, it's good for surface analysis to know all the possible weaknesses, uh, whether they're exploitable or not, but a pen tester uh, and also their uh, functionality is limited to the rule sets that they use for scanning, right? They, at the end of the day, they're automated scanning tools. A pen tester can actually add in value by looking at things uh, by doing uh, a manual pen test uh, beyond the stuff that your automated tool can look into. Sorry to interrupt, Abhishek. Thanks for taking. I was, I'm sorry, guys. Uh, there was some system hang, so I just restarted the mission. Yeah, um, we'll get back to this uh, once uh, Baba completes his demo. So, my mission. Am I able to share the screen? You're able to see my screen? Yes. Okay. So, this is how the Wi Fi and other uh, Wi for Wi Fi we can see. Uh, you know, these, uh, these tools, we can use it. You just type something, get the uh, tutorials of this. It will be very easy. It's all automated things. And Metasploit, you know how powerful it is. Just now we have seen, this is also available here in the Kali Linux. So now you might have realized how, uh, you know, this Kali Linux plays a good role, major role for pen testers, right? And you said you type simply uh, uh, Kali Linux tools, you see there are N number of tools. So these are all the tools are available. Okay, uh, spend some time, you get a good uh, info in the here. These are the password attacks, password files. All this information is there for system hacking, for website hacking, for uh, Wi-Fi hacking. Now there are a lot of tools are available. Okay, yeah. And uh, uh, one good tool that we are going to discuss now is Burpsuit. And then we'll see some website, how to capture the web, so how to uh, you know capture things. Okay, uh, so this is a burp suit. Let me know if you're able to see my screen. This is a burp suit edition. Uh, this is this will be like if you if you want to see a website, uh, what is going behind and how do you find it? You can simply do these things. Okay, I'm saying see here. I've taken one website and I would like to uh, intercept this request. Intercept is nothing but using the Bobsuit tool. So this is a Bobsuit tool and this is the browser. Two things, right? Now, whatever I type in the browser that should be captured in my Bobsuit. The reason is when you capture, you can do more manipulations or you can do more uh, 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 tampering, all those things. Okay. So I'm just, this this tool uh, is a, it's a very good tool. It's, it's both a manual and a automation tool. Uh, for now, we are using it for manual purpose. So you can simply give a URL here and run the uh, scan like how qual is uh, open was like that bob suit is also a scanner i also the advantage of with bob suit is it is a manual also so here you see uh, now i'm just intercept is off it's i'm it's i'm going to turn on so now interception is on now whatever i type here demo dot test file it's a one of the sample online banking website demo website so you see when i type the request is not going it's still loading right it's still loading it's not okay let let me take a, a login page so you will understand so i clicked on sign in okay but you see it is not loading the sign in page because until unless i forward this request to the server it won't go to the server so our bug suit is sitting in between our browser and our server so uh, this is a man in the middle a uh, tool where you can capture and hold and do whatever the modifications you want and then you can uh, forward that request so here i am forwarding this request only then 
you see here login page is available right yeah uh, so this is one thing uh, there are a lot of attacks that you can see uh, but for time being we can show only two three you might be thinking what is this things right again it is intercept is on i'm offing intercept is off okay so i don't know the password uh, for the website but this website is vulnerable to the sql injection attack sql injection attack is nothing but if you have uh, if the website is not able to parse the sql queries properly in the middle uh, you know java or uh, .net or anywhere in the sub web server and the user may run direct sql queries in the user inputs itself so here i am running sql query okay uh, anything so i don't know username and password single quote or one equal to one and then i'm just giving this is nothing but just leave it anything i'm just typed anything here uh, this is sql query one equal to one means true and this anything will be obviously this pass username is not a anything right so obviously it will be like uh, some some blah 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 you can enter okay uh, so this will be obviously shown as a false uh, so false or true the logic is true when you say or either one is true it should be true so the same logic i am applying here and i am entering this so when i enter it shows you are logged in hello admin user because as a first user is admin so i've logged in as a admin okay you can try this website it is vulnerable to, this, to the same you can just give the same things you will get this you can give it a try okay this is a pakistani website uh, just type the same things what i've shown so you will get it otherwise you type in google sql injection payloads okay you will get that things okay so uh, let's talk about different attack that's one attack you have seen right how we are able to bypass the login and um, things like that uh, here you see so there is no login page here you see anywhere you don't see login page you never find a login page at all okay so this time kali linux will be useful using kali linux derb tool you just run this website it will show you the login login link that's how i found the login page of this pakistani website okay yeah uh, going forward to another attack some interesting things we can see uh, these are the information gathering uh, we can use google search engines for information we can use crt.sh website this website yeah this website you run uh, google.com here uh, you run any website it will show you all the subdomains you can see lot of subdomains right adwords googledoc.com uh agro.txt google.com so all these things you simply can change the facebook it will take you to all the subdomains okay one domain to other domains if you want to use uh the same websites uh, but it is a different website in that main domain facebook.com is main domains and these are the subdomains so it is like that yeah uh you can also run ssl scans sslis test ssl for uh, finding out the so this is ssl labs you just type ssl labs you will get the first website click on that give your website okay google.com or any website your target.com you get a report just like that you will be having the the uh, ciphers what ciphers they are using what protocols they are using you can see all the details here this is also good website you can see you can search to see they are using tls 1.0 1.1 um, you know that that things which is vulnerable okay we can report like this way see weak weak ciphers are used all those information right 
Okay, so now let's go a quick one more attack. So let's discuss two findings, then we can take the question and answers. Um, this is one website that I found recently. This is a website, some again, some Gulf website. This website is having some vulnerability. Uh, so when I type google.com here, you see google.com is loading, right? In the website, this is called remote uh, file inclusion. So there is one attack called remote file inclusion. You can keep your own website. So uh, let's assume google.com is my own website, baba.com. Okay. And uh, I take this, this is a uh, attacker.com and I use this here. So just relate, visualize the things, what I'm saying, uh, this is not a google.com, it is a attacker.com. And when you type like this, you can see what is happening. In that website, you are able to, in that website, you are able to, what is this? Wait a minute, I'll try to, yeah. See, this is the main website, but you still can see all this information. Google.com is there, Apple is downside, the result is there. So we have included one website to another website. So this way hackers, what they will do is they will hack this website just like that. They keep their own program. They keep their program in this website, in this website, and they will run that against this website. Since it is loading here, obviously the attacker website uh, exploit also will load and that will leads to uh, uh, you know, uh, website defacement. So you are able to hack this website just like that. Okay. And uh, let's take one more quick thing. Uh, you can you can also use this LFI also. Let's see. Uh, you have etc slash password. Uh, it's loading slow. Sorry, guys. Yeah, you can see I just tempered uh, entered etc password. You know what is this is etc password in in any Linux machines. Uh, your username, your login username will be there. No system passwords that is been saved in the password file. And etc is the uh, Linux uh, uh, directory. Now I am seeing this information. These are all the usernames and passwords. Uh, username and passwords not for the websites for the uh, the website which has been hosted in one laptop right one server one computer that computer username and passwords this is called local file inclusions so we are able to include the files uh, from this server 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 means it's nothing but a computer right that computer having username and passwords that files also you can load it here okay like that anything anything so you, you are seeing that you are going behind these websites and uh, uh, getting that files here. That's that's one thing. Um, let me show, I think we are 10 minutes. Okay, one more interesting website. How many of you saw this careers360.com? You know how uh, vulnerability it is? This is a one website, right? open redirect websites, which means from your, from this legitimate website to, they will take you to the same kind of website. It looks exact same kind of website, but it is their website. How can we confirm that? Just see, I'm typing evil.com here. You can type google.com, you can type attacker.com, you can type your own website.com. Okay, so here evil, what he can do is, he can create the same kind of uh, a website and then he can run. Now you see, it will redirect to the evil.com. You're seeing, right? Uh, so what I did, I'm in, I'm in careers360.com, okay? But I entered slash slash evil.com slash. When I clicked enter, it redirects to the evil.com or you can redirect to any, any website, not only the evil.com, okay? Uh, so just give one more try. I'm typing here, google.com or facebook.com anything 
you see it will redirect to the google.com so and let's assume let's visualize these things if attacker uh, will re re redirect to his website and that redirection website will be same as the victim website this is victim website okay so if it is same like that and uh, so when when he redirect to his page and it looks same the login if you give this username and password that will actually compromised okay that's how the things will be in the open phishing attacks you can say yeah um one minute let's take a question on the answers as immediately but so i'm just showing one webs one thing on attack one final attacks so uh, there is a uh, uh, otp here i need to enter some number i am entering some someone's number i don't know you can give your own numbers and send me otp okay i don't have otp here so because i that's not my number but i want to uh, hack this website using the i want to bypass this otp and i want to take his account so what i do and this is purely for educational purpose please don't uh, you know spoil these websites uh, so i want to share the knowledge to you so i'm just sharing but don't you know do such things don't do any malicious things on these websites okay so i the main intention of this is to show this and if you find this kind of vulnerabilities report to them directly okay don't don't spoil these things so i am typing uh, any any anything any you give uh, 1 2 3 4 or anything uh, and okay 1 2 3 4 i am typing uh, so but if i am capturing this request before capturing i would like to play with this otp parameter so i am again going and interception is on here so when i click interception on click on verify otp you see that will come here obviously right uh, so i don't know which request it is i am just forwarding this yeah here i can see 1 2 3 4 is going now what i do is i will right click and intercept this request do intercept this request i want the response of this just a minute i'm just changing the settings i want the i do intercept this request and i clicked on it so my request is going okay i got invalid otp obviously right uh, so if i change it from uh, do would you, would you like to see first thing whether it works or not just i will uh, release that and see you see invalid otp right you are able to see invalid otp now this time we'll see how we can uh, do the same things with the same passwords so again capture quickly this time verify otp and right click forward forward yes this is the one we would like to capture capture this request forward forward to the server yeah here you see uh, invalid but i observed there is something that if you add here type equal to 3 you can ask how you know this okay because i have just given a uh, one uh, my own phone number my own otp and then i found this is the regular uh, right response so this time i'm giving a wrong otp and then i'm trying i use the same thing what was there before when i given a right otp so this was there before okay and i'm simply forwarding this request you see this time we are able to log in correct and you can give victim victim email id so it doesn't even ask anything so if you know any email id getting email id is very easy right so uh, this information you can say victim and his last name and his email id you give 
your friends email ids who are using these websites okay and simply submit it that's all you got his account uh, there's some issue but yeah that's how you get an account what i'm missing okay i have a question so the, you you have seen that how we are able to bypass the otp right okay you you have bypassed it and you are able to you can log in into that the same way you can do it for royal enfield okay royal enfield also it is same thing just you just need to go and register uh you can give a test drive without you you can give your your friends phone number and uh you can just create an account using your friends phone numbers and all you can do it but don't i'm saying don't do it i have already uh, reported this uh, so it's it's same thing just you do it a little bit change you will get that things okay most probably yeah uh, that's all for things hope you get some interesting things there are a lot of things that we can play with around in the websites where, uh, we can hack the websites in different different ways uh, yeah some resources uh, so the point is here now we are i think we are done with webinar now uh, there is one demo on april 15th saturday uh, a detailed uh, things will be there you can join in that demo and the classes regular classes will start on uh, start from the next monday april 17th so 15th is demo you all can join there uh, and uh, 17th is a uh, um, uh, regular classes will start thanks everyone uh, vinod and abhishek would like to take now question and answers for some 10 minutes or 5 minutes if you have time yeah i pretty much uh, try to answer all the questions uh, on the chat um, if there are any new questions feel free to add in the chat and we can uh, look into those you might also want to just have a quick look at the uh, chat uh, in case i have missed any uh, questions so uh, there is a question from sandeep why do we exploit only pakistani websites it's not required i just found yesterday and i'm just showing you can i royal enfield is not a pakistani website and you can do it any websites but remember that whenever you find any vulnerability you have to report to them okay that is the main thing it's not like pakistani websites are vulnerable or indian websites there are so many indian websites are vulnerable i just showed you that sugar things right and uh, yeah royal enfield sugar things but yeah report it it's not like uh you can use that and do the things there is a question from lokesh and uh, there is a question in the zoom uh question and answer panel as well can you have a look uh can can you read it uh so i don't see the question what is that question uh, uh, know Lo lokesh is asking how do we register to the class and sai is asking please share the invite for the up upcoming class okay i think uh, vinod can answer this are there any certificates for the webinar or certificate for your classes uh so but uh, need to drop thanks for okay so the thing is certificates a certified ethical hacker if you attend the classes you may get uh, very easily that certified ethical hacker that will be useful for your career as entry level as a freshers for 1 2 3 years experience you can utilize this yeah i think we get a record video in youtube uh, uh, mr vinod is there can okay, also this is recording the video you share uh, regarding the classes and all uh, so they can reach out to you right you know mm, yeah so to, how to reach out i think they can uh, fill that survey uh, at the end of the session uh, yeah another one uh, we posting okay end of the session you will get a form uh, so audience uh, everyone you can fill that and uh, that will you know they uh, we not will help you How to attend these things? Uh, I've answered uh, a question coming in from uh, 
So there was a question uh, from Neha, and the question is how to secure your local machine. So I have answered that uh, on the chat. Okay. And yeah. Always keep update your softwares. Uh, install all the patches, security patches. Uh, when you are installing any third-party softwares, make sure you have installed the latest versions. Make sure your Java libraries or jQuery libraries, third-party libraries, everything is up to date. So that way you can, uh, and when it comes to the email hacking, make sure when you get any email ID, see the uh, uh, domain, from which domain you are getting it. Okay, that is very important. If you find anything fishy, then you can just simply, uh, uh, you know, report that finding. That, that sorry, that report that uh, phishing mail to your uh, administrators, to your IT people. Bob suit is built in, yeah, Bob suit. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, there is a tool, uh, uh, there is an extension feature called uh, intruder in that. You can utilize that. Okay, Abhishek is answering that, okay. Any other questions? Uh, Abhishek, you are saying one question, right? What the, What is that question? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> so that's answered. The uh, question that I was answering now is, uh, is there a way to secure mobile from vulnerable attacks? So there is something called OWASP. Uh, it's a community that uh, maintains knowledge uh, based on the popular, uh, well-known web application, mobile application attack. So I'm just sharing a link to that. It has a list for mobile applications as well. Uh, so looking into that will help will help answer the questions on how you can secure your mobile applications. Yeah. Thanks, thanks everyone. Thanks for attending the session. Thanks for attending the webinar. Yep. Thanks everyone. Thanks everyone for joining. Lovely to have you all. Yeah. Bye. Bye, Abhijit. Bye, Bashar. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Mm -hmm.